think everything's okay. Uh, I hope you like my new backdrop. I've got the PT green happening today rather than the, the black, which is a bit scary, as some people said. Let's see if this works. Cool, that's working. Uh, okay, that's all good then. I can see myself on YouTube Live. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the YouTube Live link into the chat. If you have any problems viewing my PPT slides on your computer, if it's blurry, then you're going to need to watch this on YouTube Live. For some reason, there's an incompatibility issue with my technology and some people's computers. I don't know what that is. So the, sh in <laughs> the short of it is, if your screen looks blurry and kind of weird, then you're going to have to watch this on YouTube Live. So I'm gonna paste that link into the chat, but you can also just go to YouTube and type in PTE and you'll see it up there as well. Okay, so let me paste it in here. Uh, I'm gonna paste the link to all attendees. I'm also gonna turn off the chat so you can only chat with me. So allow attendees to chat with all panelists. Okay, so now you won't be able to see each other's chats, which is good because when we do the reading, for example, uh, you won't be able to see each other's answers. Awesome. Hello from Brazil, says Hikado. Nice to see you, Hikado. And there's somebody from uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, yes, I guess we've got many, many different countries here. We've got 193 people in the Zoom meeting and we've got 190 people on YouTube Live. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, let's just, let me get my slides together. This is a big classroom, crazy, crazy big classroom. Uh, right, okay, I guess we can get started. It's all recording, I think. Just let me double check that it's recording. Live, I'm gonna record this, hold on. Uh, record to the cloud. Yeah, okay, cloud's good, cloud's good. Cool, I think we're ready to go. Hello everyone, my name's Jay. I'm one of the expert PTE academic teachers here at e2language.com. Just before we begin, if you haven't signed up for free to e2language, please go and do that. Maybe after this live class has finished this mock test, just go to e2language.com, you can sign up for free. Or if you're feeling a little bit outlandish, you can always sign up to one of our paid packages, which give you tutorials, feedback on your writing, access to all the live classes, all the course material, including overview methods, uh, overview lessons, methods, and practice activities. There's lots and lots uh, to do at e2language.com if you wanna pass your PTE. Cool, what are we going to do today? We're going to do a PTE academic mini mock test. What does that mean? Well, the plan is this. We're going to do one question from each PTE task. So there are 20 PTE tasks in total. We're gonna to do one of each. Now this will be the same level of difficulty as the actual PT, or I have at least tried my hardest to make it the same level of difficulty. It should be very similar in the very least. We're gonna look at instructions. So I'm gonna show you what to do in each task. We're gonna look at scoring. And I'm also gonna show you my answers as we go, but I'm gonna put you under pressure. All of these tasks will be, will be timed. I want you to feel the pressure of the PT because in the real PT, you will be feeling pressure, right? It's gonna be di very different from when you study at home. There's a whole new psychological realm that you must enter when you do this, but that's cool. Practice is a good thing. Let's firstly talk about PT speaking, the first task of which is read aloud. The task is this, a text appears on the screen. You simply need to read the text aloud. You get 30 to 40 seconds to prepare to read aloud. And then you get 30 to 40 seconds to speak or to read aloud properly when you're actually recorded, okay? I'm just gonna give you a little tip for this one. If you, I'm sure all of you have watched the news before or you're familiar with particularly American news, maybe it's the same in your country, but the way they read, it's very emphatic and lots of intonation, lots of ups and downs. They don't read like robots, whatever you do, don't read like a robot. The PT really likes good inflection, ups and downs, intonation, okay? So I want you to read this and I want you to read it with meaning. I want you to read it with purpose and I want you to read it uh, 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 as emphatically as you possibly can, okay? Even if you feel like you're a bit of an idiot, that's cool. That's what this is all about, improving. So just before we do this, you're scored in read aloud on content, 
pronunciation and oral fluency. Content means that you read every word as they are, right? You don't change anything. You don't add anything. You don't skip anything. Pronunciation, while well, you're measured on your, uh, 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 well, you're measured against native-like pronunciation, but you just need to speak as clearly as you possibly can, get your mouth moving. And you're also scored on oral fluency, which is your ability to not hesitate, to not um and ah, uh, and just to let those words flow. Here we go. Okay, start reading properly. Cool, and that's the end of that. This is a nice task to, to begin the test with. It's not too intimidating. You just have to read aloud, but you certainly have to read aloud in a certain way to maximize your scores. And this is an extremely important task. It also connects to your reading scores, by the way. And there's good reason to believe that it really does affect your speaking score, this task. It's certainly an important one, good one to get right. Okay, here's an answer. This is how I would read it on test day. Materials inspired by disappearing Hollywood dinosaurs and real life shy squid have been invented. The thin swatches can quickly change how they reflect heat, smoothing or wrinkling their surfaces in under a second after being stretched or electrically triggered. Potential uses include better camouflage for troops and insulation for spacecraft, storage containers, emergency shelters, clinical care and building heating and cooling systems. And I would then click next and move on to the next task. Now, I stuttered or I, 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 the word triggered, I sort of got stuck on a little bit there, but I just pushed through, okay? And you would have noticed that I read this much like a news reader would read the news. That brings us to repeat sentence, which is the second task of PTE speaking. The task is this, after listening to a recording of a sentence, you just need to repeat that sentence back exactly as the original speaker said it right? You're scored on content, so the, you have to get all of the words, the same words in the correct order to get a full score, maximum score. You're scored on pronunciation, you need to speak as clearly as you possibly can. And oral fluency, again, you want to mimic the intonation of the speaker. So if the speaker says something like, the library is located behind the quadrangle. You need to say the library is located behind the quadrangle. You don't say the library is located behind the quadrangle. Okay. You need to mimic the same oral fluency as the original voice. Uh, yes. Cool. Let's do this one. Hopefully my audio is working. I'm going to play this one in three, two, one. Clothing can affect your mood, your health, and your self-esteem. And hopefully you got that. The answer or the sentence that was said is this. Clothing can affect your mood, your health, and your self-esteem. Now, I can't actually hear these audio, so I'm just hoping that it says the same thing. Let me just see. Any... Nice. Okay, cool. Good. Looking good. 228 in the webinar and 260. Wow, we're well and truly past 500 people in this class. That's awesome. Thanks for coming along. I appreciate it. That's really cool. Okay, good. Repeat sentence. Uh, yeah, so scoring, if you missed a few words, your score will, scores will decrease and you should try and get the same um, 
sequence of words as well. If you miss a word, you may just want to insert a word. At least you'll get the points for oral fluency as far as I know. All right, good. That brings us to the most terrifying of the PTE tasks. Well, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be. This is describe image. The task is this. An image will appear on the screen. You need to describe the image, well, in detail, but there's only so much detail you can say in 40 seconds. Now, the timing's a little bit interesting. You get 25 seconds to prepare. That means you get 25 seconds to look at that image and think about, okay, what's going on here? What's the highest? What's the lowest? What's the biggest? What's the smallest? Then you get 40 seconds to begin to speak. And you should only speak for about 35 seconds. You don't want to speak all the way to 40 seconds, okay? If you're familiar with the E2 language method, you will know exactly what to do in this task, okay? You're scored on content. So you, you have to be speaking about the image in front of you. You can't memorize something else or you will get zero for everything, right? So content is important. Pronunciation, speak as clearly as you can. Oral fluency, speak without hesitating if you can. Here we go. How did you go? Uh, if you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I screwed that up terribly, then uh, yeah, you may need to practice this task. In fact, even for native English speakers, this is a really tricky task. In fact, I'm going to show you how tricky it is. I'm going to give you an example and I'll probably screw it up myself, but here we go. These pie charts represent the amount of steel that was produced in two years, 2016 and 2017. China produced the most amount of steel and this increase between the two years from 49% to 49.2%. The rest of the world accounted for a significant amount of steel production at 10.9% in 2016 and 11.2% .2 in 2017. The EU was also a significant contributor to steel production at around 10%. Overall, China produces the most steel. Boom. Whoa. You sort of get that terrifying little moment when you think, what am I going to say at that last second? But then I just, I squeezed in a little conclusion there, which was just saying that China was the biggest producer of steel. Cool. There's a method there. There's a structure you should be able to follow. You can apply it to all images, almost all images, I would say. Uh, but really, this is about thinking on your feet, about spontaneous language production. And yeah, this is a tricky one. But anyway, let's push on. We're going to look at retail lecture. This is also an interesting task. For this one, you're going to need a, uh, in fact, for a number of the tasks in the PT, you're going to need a notebook. So if you don't have a piece of paper next to you, please run and grab one uh, because this task as with some of the other tasks, they're impossible to do without pen and paper because you need to take notes and you need to take good notes. So let me turn my phone off in case somebody calls me. All right. So the task is this. After listening to or watching a lecture, retell the lecture in your own words. The lecture that you hear or see will go for about 60 to 90 seconds, by the way. So you get 10 seconds to prepare after that lecture has finished, which isn't much time at all. It's just enough time to look at your notes. And then you have 40 seconds to retell that lecture in your own words. I don't know why it says describe image here. I'm sorry, I didn't change that. It should say retell lecture. 
Now you're scored on content, so you must be speaking on topic and that really depends on the notes that you take. So you must take good notes. Pronunciation, you must speak clearly. Oral fluency, you should try and speak without hesitating as much as possible, right? Oh, this is what it looks like. No, sorry. Give me one second, these slides are wrong. I need to paste that audio onto that. I always make little mistakes. It's pretty much impossible to get this right. If somebody checks it, all right, that's good. That's all I want. I just want that audio file there. Okay, here we go. Get ready to take notes and listen to this lecture in three, two, one. The idea of eliminating poverty is a great goal. I don't think anyone in this room would disagree. What worries me is when politicians with money and charismatic rock stars use the words, it all just sounds so, so simple. Now I've got no bucket of money today and I've got no policy to release and I certainly haven't got a guitar. I'll leave that to others. But I do have an idea and that idea is called Housing for Health. Housing for Health works with poor people. It works in the places where they live and the work is done to improve their health. Over the last 28 years, this tough, grinding, dirty work has been done by literally thousands of people around Australia and, and more recently overseas. And their work has proven that focused design can improve even the poorest living environments. It can improve health and it can play a part in reducing, if not eliminating poverty. Now have 10 seconds. Begin retelling the lecture now. And stop. If you were still speaking up to the end, you should definitely stop before that time. Right. That, yeah, describe image, retail lecture. These are the two of the trickiest speaking tasks. Not necessarily the most important. They're all important, but these ones are, well, makes you think on your feet. That's for sure. All right. Let me give you an answer. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to let, don't worry about the time there. Can I stop that time? Okay. Just have a look at my notes here. I did this before, I listened to the lecture, I took notes and these were what my notes looked like on paper. So a limb, pov, no one disagree, politicians, rock stars, too simple. So quite simple notes, but if I really listened to this lecture and understood it, then I should be able to combine both my memory of what the speaker was saying and my notes, which reinforce my memory into a coherent structure and speak for about 35 seconds. Let me try to do this. Uh, how? Here we go. The speaker was discussing his idea about how to eliminate poverty. He said that no one disagrees that poverty should be eliminated. He mentioned that politicians and rock stars often speak about poverty elimination, but their ideas are too simple. He is not rich, he doesn't have a policy, and he does not have a guitar, but he has a great idea. And the idea is called Housing for Health. The idea is that he will help poor people in the communities. Housing for Health has been running for 28 years and has helped thousands of people worldwide, including in Australia. Okay, I didn't get enough time to finish my notes there, but that's just what you do. Again, there's a structure, E2 language teaches a beautiful structure for this, gives you lots of practice. And so you can go into the exam feeling pretty confident, as long as you're taking good notes, that you can retail just about any lecture, okay? Some of the lectures that you'll get in your exam will be extremely uh, abstract, by the way, 
very strange. So uh, yeah, you need to take good notes. That's for sure. All right, here we go. Answer short question. This is the final speaking task of the PTE. The task is quite simple. You will listen to a question and you answer with a single word or a few words. You're scored on content in that you answer correctly. You're scored on pronunciation in that you speak clearly and oral fluency in that you do not hesitate or um and ah, you just say the word or the few words that you need. Here we go. You're gonna answer this question in three, two, one. What do you call a brief summary of a scientific research article? Let's have a look at what you write here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this might be my problem. Nobody's got it. Yay, Rucha's got it. Thank you, Rucha. Uh, damn, I thought this was a good question. Maybe it's not. Okay. Let me change the question. Let me change the question. Then I'm just going to ask you. you. Ready? I'm going to ask you again. What do you call a brief summary at the beginning of a scientific research article? What do you call a brief summary at the beginning of a scientific research article? Hopefully you get the answer from that. Okay, nice. Now it's starting to come in. My bad, not a good question. This is why you need to test questions because Jay's thinking, oh, this is a perfect question sends it out into the universe and all of a sudden he realizes that it doesn't make any sense. The answer to that question is, well, at least in my mind was abstract, abstract. The abstract is a brief summary at the beginning of a scientific research article. Uh, yes, if you wrote thesis, that would definitely be wrong because theses are definitely not brief. That word brief is really critical and also summary, so a brief summary. Maybe not a great question, but you get the idea, yeah? All right, before we move on, we need you to help feed the team. Uh, if you're feeling generous, you can go to paypal.me slash e2language and you can donate as much or as little money as you would like to help e2language continue to do the wonderful things that we do. So uh, I'm gonna be monitoring my phone. Nobody's donated anything yet. But if you feel like donating like two bucks, five bucks, a hundred rupees, whatever it is, you can go to paypal.me slash e2 language. I'd like to, I'd like to get enough to buy dinner tonight. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. And I'll certainly be mentioning names as we do this. So paypal.me slash e2 language. If you want to donate some small change. All right, let's move to PT writing. There are two tasks. The first one is called summarize written text. The task is this. After reading a text, write a one sentence summary of the passage, a single sentence summary. You'll have 10 minutes. This task contributes to both your reading and writing score. So you make sure that you read that summary or that, that text correctly, and then write the single complex sentence. Okay, cool. You're scored on four things. You're scored on relevance. So you need to be writing about the, the main idea in that text. You're scored on structure and, and, and length. I'm not too sure, sentence structure, I guess, and length there. Uh, so I believe the scoring for length is you can't write below five words and you can't write more than 70. I think that's it. Uh, anyway, there's a key sort of length that you should be aiming for. If you're an E2 member, you'll know what that is. Grammatical accuracy, you're scored on that. And you're scored on how precise your vocabulary is. Now, here's the key with this one. You'd probably be very tempted to just take full sentences out of or a full sentence from the text and just change it slightly. That's not what you want to do. You can certainly take words from the text, right? Because you have to write about the thing in front of you. You shouldn't take phrases and you shouldn't definitely not take a sentence. You need to look at this thing and summarize it in your brain. Imagine that you've just read this and your friend says to you, hey, Jay, what's, what, what are you reading about? And you've got one sentence to explain it. And you say, well, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's what you need to try and do here. So turn it into your own sentence. Cool, let's do this one. You have 10 minutes.
If you're in Zoom and this screen looks blurry, you'll have to watch this on YouTube Live. And somebody just gave me 10 bucks. Thank you very much, whoever that was.
Thank you very much, Vikas Kumar, for your ten dollars. I'm now on twenty bucks. Might go out for dinner tonight. Another 30 seconds left. All right, before I show you my uh, example sentence, I've had three lovely people donating to the E2 team. We've had a, a lovely Russian, I can't read your uh, Russian language, so I just have to call you the lovely Russian, Vikas and Subrata, thank you very much for your donations. It's very, very helpful. 
Right, let's have a look at my sentence. My sentence says this, yours should say something similar. Of course, there is a million different ways that you can write this complex sentence. Mine says, researchers have improved upon previous attempts to create wearable food monitors by developing a small three-layered sensor that attaches directly to a tooth, which allows individuals to track food intake, such as glucose, salt, and alcohol. And there's another donation from Raju. Thank you very much, guys. This is awesome. Anyway, mine's about 37 words, so about 35 words is good. And I think that I've uh, managed to put in all the main ideas from those three paragraphs about improving upon previous attempts that attaches to a tooth. If you didn't get that, that that's important. And yeah, anyway, there's a million different ways to do this. Right, this leads us to write essay. If you haven't seen the uh, video on the super method or the super structure for writing the essay, you should check that out. It's just a very simple way to write the introduction, two paragraphs and the conclusion. It works for all of these uh, PT essay prompts. Of course, you need to be a little bit flexible on test day. You never really know what you're going to get, but the essay is, is always going to be argumentative slash persuasive, okay? So it's an opinion, you're arguing an opinion. Cool. The task is to write a 200 to 300 word essay on a given topic and you have 20 minutes to do so, which is not much time, by the way. So having a structure in your mind is a very clever idea. You're scored on a number of criteria. You're scored on content that you write directly about the question prompt. If you write indirectly about the question prompt, you'll immediately lose marks. Okay. Keep that question prompt in your mind at all times. Length, you need to write between 200 and 300 words. People ask, do I get extra points for writing more than two uh, or closer to 300? The answer is no, you just get two points for writing between 200 and 300. Structure, use the E2 language structure. Grammar, well, this is where feedback on your writing might come in handy. You may need to know what mistakes you're making, but you should try and be as accurate as possible, of course. Precision, you need to formulate your sentences the combination of vocabulary and grammar as precisely as possible. Vocabulary, only use words that you know and know well. You want to use appropriate and precise vocabulary and you need to spell everything correctly. Uh, and by the way, just with spelling, choose British English or American English and stick with it, okay? So if you write colour or you are British English, make sure that the rest of your spelling is British style as well, for example. All right, here's the question prompt. I'm gonna read it to you. Urban sprawl is an increasing issue around the world. One way in which to solve this issue is to construct cities vertically rather than horizontally. Thank you, Shrikanth. Are such cities a good idea? Just let me explain this before you start writing. The idea here is, this is an IELTS essay prompt that I've stolen here. The idea is that cities are expanding and they're expanding outwards, right? Now, urban developers think that People, uh, we should build our cities upwards, like taller buildings, taller apartment buildings and whatnot. So the question prompt asks you, are such cities, vertical cities, a good idea? You have 20 minutes to write your essay and then I'll show you my essay.
All right, one more minute. Cool, that will probably do. Okay, hopefully you've written your essay because that's uh, 20 minutes or close enough. Now, a lot of people struggled with this essay prompt, I guess because the word urban sprawl is quite an uncommon term. It's a little bit, uh, you need to have a knowledge of that. But however, you could have worked out what this meant by, follow by understanding the rest of the sentences. So it says urban sprawl is an increasing issue. Okay, so we need to know what urban sprawl is. So one way in which to solve urban sprawl is to construct cities vertically. Well, you know what vertical means rather than horizontally. So that means building up, not outwards. Are such cities, vertical cities, a good idea? Anyway, here's my answer. Here's an answer. I'm just going to read this to you. Uh, hopefully your essay was something similar to this. Of course, there are different thing, ways that you could argue. You could have argued that, they, that building upwards is a bad idea. For example, you could have said that earthquakes can um, destroy the apartment buildings and that um, I don't know what the other bad idea is, but you could come up with two. What I wanted to do in arguing that it's a good idea to build up is just to think of two reasons. Are such cities a good idea? My answer was yes. Okay, now I just need two reasons. So one, I said it's going to be environmentally better. And two, I said it was going to be better for the community. Okay, so that's my two reasons. They'll become my two paragraphs. And overall, my essay is going to argue, yes, building cities upwards rather than outwards is a good idea. So here's what I wrote. And this follows the E2 language structure, by the way. As the human population continues to increase around the world, people are increasingly moving to cities. As a result of the influx, cities are expanding into urban sprawl. One possible solution to the continual spread of suburbs is to build cities upwards rather than outwards. This essay will discuss why vertically constructed cities are a very good idea. The main reason why building upwards is a good idea is that it contains cities to a smaller land mass area. This results in a far smaller impact on the surrounding natural environment, which means that forests, rivers and oceans will be healthier. It goes without saying that urban sprawl is environmentally destructive. This is the single most important factor as to why cities should be built upwards. That one paragraph only talks about the benefits on the environment of vertical cities. Second paragraph. The second most important reason why cities should be constructed vertically is that it creates more harmonious communities. People living in a single apartment building, uh, in sorry, in single apartment buildings are much more likely to interact in more peaceful ways because they don't own separate plots of land. In my apartment, for example, people are very friendly to each other. This is not true, by the way. I have never even met my neighbours because they know each other very well. This is another important effect of vertically constructed cities. In conclusion, as the population continues to climb, we need to begin to build taller cities. This essay is this essay essay. This essay discussed how vertical cities improve environmental conditions and result in friendlier communities. Clearly, building cities upwards is a very smart move. All right. If that seemed like, whoa, how did you do that? That's crazy. Uh, in terms of the structure, it's actually very straightforward once you learn that structure and you practice a few times. If you need feedback on your on your grammar or structure, you can, as part of the package on E2 language, you can submit essays through and you receive feedback 48 hours later. Okay. So if you're worried about your writing or speaking, you want some feedback, you can do that. But all of this is all connected up. It's just part of the essay structure that we teach. Okay, uh, yes. Now, if you do need help with your writing, do check out e2language.com, okay? You can sign up for free. All right, let's think about PT reading now. Let's start with multiple choice, choose single answer, the first task of PT reading. The task is this, after reading a text, answer a multiple choice question on the content or tone of the text by selecting one response. You should spend about two minutes on this uh, task, okay? Um, yes, the text, sorry, let me go on, skills tested. So what you need to read for or what the question prompt will ask you to look for is the main idea of the text, a specific detail of the text, 
the purpose or function of the text, an opinion or tone of the text, or an inference, okay? Here we go. I'm going to give you two minutes to answer this question here. Okay, that's two minutes. The question prompt says, according to the text, so you're not using your own general knowledge or anything here, contemporary psycholinguistics can best be described as what? Philosophical, non-invasive, widespread, interdisciplinary, psychological, or well-established? The answer, drum roll, and feel free to argue with me if you like, the answer is D, interdisciplinary. It is not philosophical. It was philosophical. Contemporary psycholinguistics is not philosophical anymore. Non-invasive, well, that just doesn't make sense. That was just a word taken from the text. Widespread, well, I don't think that's correct either. Psychological, well, that's wrong because it's also taking into account biology and neurobiology. Well-established, well, no. You can see from the uh, tone of the text that it's a largely a new field of studies. Study, So it's not well established. The answer is interdisciplinary because that's the only one that makes sense. Modern research makes use of biology, neuroscience, cognitive science, and information theory. So that would be the best description of contemporary psycholinguistics. Let's put a little smiley face into the chat. I just want to know how many people got that. Yeah, got it correct. <laughs> yeah, nice, good. Okay, let's move on to multiple choice, multiple answers. This is pretty similar, except obviously you have to choose more than one or you can choose more than one. So after reading a text, answer a multiple choice question on the content or tone of the text by selecting more than one response. This time the text is going to be longer. In single answer, it's 110 words max. In multiple choice, multiple answers, it's up to 300 words. The scoring works like this. Suppose a question has four answer options, A, B, C, and D. And let's say that A and B are correct, okay? So if you select A and B, you'll get two points. Congratulations. If you select A, you'll score one point. No points are lost for not selecting B. If you select B, you'll get one point. No points are lost for not selecting A. If you select A, B, and C, well, they're two correct and one wrong, so you get one point. And if you select A, B, C, and D, well, two minus two equals zero points. This task tests your ability to read for specific details more than anything. Here we go. You have three minutes to answer the question, what is Professor Rauder attempting to do?
Okay. <laughs> Let's just, I just want to check to see if anyone got this right. Cause this is a, this is what you call a doozy. This is a doozy. Who got this right? Oh, who got that right? Someone got it there. Tarang Shah, well done. All right, all right. I'm gonna give you a little bit more time, just, just another 30 seconds or so. All right, let's go through the answers. This is a, all right. So wait, let's go back. Let's read the question prompt. What is Professor Rorder trying to do or attempting to do? A, improve the way in which AVs, autonomous vehicles, if you didn't pick that up, you're in trouble. You needed to know what an AV is, right? An AV is an autonomous self-driving vehicle. So improve the way in which AVs signal to each other, decrease the space needed between autonomous vehicles when they are parked, Calculate the size of the parking grid to maximize autonomous vehicle storage. Decrease the number of moves needed to retrieve an autonomous vehicle. Reduce a valuable urban space. Stop autonomous vehicles from pulling out on each other. The answers are C. Calculate the size of the parking grid to maximize autonomous vehicle storage and decrease the number of moves needed to retrieve an autonomous vehicle. That comes from this single sentence here, which says the researchers challenge, it should be an apostrophe S, sorry about that, was to determine the optimal size of the grid to maximize storage. Let's just think about this. Okay, his challenge was to, to determine the optimal size of the grid to maximize storage. Okay, that looks pretty similar to here. Calculate the size of the parking grid to maximize AV storage. And D, well, it says here, decrease the number of moves needed to retrieve an AV, minimizing the number of moves required to extract any given car. C and D, if you've got C and D, that is legendary. Well done, that's a great effort. Of course, he could have just chosen one answer and just been, uh, played it safe. Why is B incorrect? Uh, because his... He was not attempting to decrease the space needed between the AVs when they are parked. That wasn't his intention, okay? And in fact, none of the others were. I won't go into details as to why because we'll be here for too long. Let's move to reorder paragraph. The task is this. Several text boxes appear on a screen in a random order. Put the text boxes in the correct order. In other words, reorder the paragraph. Spend about two minutes, no more than two minutes. What you need to do is read for the independent sentence the sentence that stands alone, then you need to think about coherence, sentence flow, and logic. Away you go.
Okay, that's two minutes. Now, let's just look at the answers. And the answers are D-E-A-C-B. D-E-A-C-B, who got D-E-A-C-B? Nice, this was a tough one. I, yeah, I'm trying to really notch this up and push you guys. Let's have a look why. This was, this was tough because the usual subject verb object, subject verb object, where the object of the first sentence leads to the subject of the next sentence doesn't quite add up. First sentence is this, although mammals that live in water share a similarly oblong body shape, they are not closely related. Rather, seals and sea lions are closely related to dogs, manatees, sorry, related to dogs, manatees share ancestry of elephants and whales and dolphins are related to hippos and other hoofed mammals. To learn more about how these groups of land mammals took on their characteristic girth when they turned aquatic, the researchers compiled body masses for 3,859 living and 2,999 fossil mammal species from existing data sets. The analysis includes about 70% of living species and 25% of extinct species. From this analysis, blah, blah, blah. That's a tough one. Well done if you got that. Very, very good. Uh, fill in the blanks. Here we go. A text appears on the screen with several gaps. Drag words from the box below to fill the gaps. Only spend about a minute on this task. This tests your knowledge and application of vocabulary, in particular, collocation, which is natural sounding phrases. Okay, you have a minute and 30 to finish this one. Okay, this was, and these do exist in the PT, by the way, phrasal verbs. Yeah, phrasal, oh, no, not necessarily phrasal verbs, actually. Uh, prepositions, definitely. There's some other adjective ones as well. Let's have a look at the answers here. The answers are aimed at, understanding of, solved in, and span from, at, of, in, from. Who got at, of, in, from? Prepositions are so tricky. Three out of four. A lot of, some people got four out of four. Nice work. Cool. All right. If you're anything like me, you're starting to get fatigued. Okay. This is when the fatigue kicks in. And by the way, remember in the PT, you do like five read alouds and then five describe images. And we've only done one of each. So you definitely need on test day to eat a lot of food before the exam starts. You definitely don't wanna be hung over. You should try not to be tired, but you probably won't sleep very well the night before in anticipation. Get as much sleep as possible. Anyway, the point is you wanna be as fully energized as possible because this is a marathon, this test, okay? Like all of the English language tests. Reading and writing, fill in the blanks. So a text appears on the screen with several gaps. Fill in each gap from a drop-down list of response options. You get about three minutes to do this. This tests your understanding of word choice, okay? So let's say that there are two answer options, clean and tidy, right? So 
I cleaned the papers on my desk or I tidied the papers on my desk. Which is the more precise verb here? Which one is more precise? Well, the real precise one is tidy, tidy papers. You don't clean papers, you tidy them, okay? So there's a semantic or meaningful difference there between those two words. And this task tests your ability to distinguish between those two or four words in this case. Here we go. Okie dokie, what are the answers here? Well, let's just go straight to it. So, benefit, the benefit of mallets, bibs, or utensils. See, there's also something else going on here. It's not just, it's not just a word. You need to understand the greater context or the entire paragraph of what you're reading. You really need to understand the whole thing, actually, in order for some of these questions, you need to go back in the paragraph or forward in the paragraph in order to locate the correct word. All right. Uh, in this one, it was talking about uh, eating crabs and we have the benefit. Humans have the benefit of using mallets, bibs or utensils. Uh, a species of water snake in Malaysia defies this limitation. Okay. Defies is the best word there. By ripping crabs into manageable Bite-sized pieces is the only word that truly makes sense there. He examined the feeding habits, not rituals, practices, or modes. Rituals and practices refers to human beings. We're talking about snakes here, and modes is just wrong, so it's feeding habits. And then, of course, the meaning down here is uh, he found that snakes that hunt soft-shell crabs can take on prey four times bigger than they otherwise could swallow whole. So it was about size, not weight or density or wealth, 
It was about size. So that bigger is the best one. So if you got benefit defies manageable habits and bigger, congratulations, that is not an easy task. Okie dokie. At this point in the PT, you can go to the bathroom. Uh, you can have a little break, uh, take some breaths, have a drink. And I suggest you do this actually, utilize this time because yeah, you start to get fatigued, especially by the end of reading, you're thinking, wow. And listening, well, it's tricky because listening's like that, uh, tran it has the transience. It doesn't stay on the page where you can read it again and again. In listening, it just disappears, right? So you wanna be really on the ball before you start this one. Anyway, we're just gonna push through. So I hope you're coping okay. Um, I haven't had a donation in a while, by the way. So far, we've had the lovely Russian. We've had Vikas, Subrata, Raju, Srikanth, and Atul all donate some money to E2 Language, which we appreciate enormously. Summarize spoken text. The task is this. After listening to a recording, write a 50 to 70 word summary. You'll have about nine minutes to answer, okay? So here we go. I'm going to play this for you. Uh, just let me check something actually, just bear with me for a second. I just need to know I've got the right audio file. Okay, cool, let me just check this. Ah, oh, I can't. All right, I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to presume that it's right. Okay, that's fine. You'll tell to me otherwise. To decode the politics of racial threat in America. Okay, now that's playing, right. Uh, okay, let me go back. Um, yeah, hopefully this is the right audio file. Away you go. Remember, you'll need to take notes. Three, two, one, start. There's an African proverb that goes, the lion's story will never be known as long as the hunter is the one to tell it. More than a racial conversation, we need a racial literacy to decode the politics of racial threat in America. Key to this literacy is a forgotten truth that the more that we understand that our cultural differences represent the power to heal the centuries of racial discrimination, dehumanization, and illness. Both of my parents were African-American. My father was born in Southern Delaware, my mother in North Philadelphia, and these two places are as different from each other as East is from West, as New York City is from Montgomery, Alabama. My father's way of dealing with racial conflict was to have my brother Brian, my sister Christy and I in church would seem like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If anybody bothered us, because of the color of our skin, he believed that you should pray for them, knowing that God would get them back in the end. You could say that his racial coping approach was spiritual for later on, one day, like Martin Luther King. My mother's coping approach was a little different. She was, uh, you could say, more relational. Uh, right now, like in your face, right now. More like Malcolm X.
Okie dokie. That's about, in fact, what happens in this task is uh, you hear the lecture that goes for about 90 seconds. You have 10 minutes total time. So you have about eight and a half minutes to write your summary. I hope you took good notes because the key to this task is note taking. Let's look at my answer. Your answer might look something similar to this. My answer says the speaker was discussing race relations in the USA. More specifically, he was talking about how culture plays an important role in racism and he believes that understanding cultural differences is key to resolving racial issues. He mentioned that his parents were both African-American and that they had very different ways of dealing with racism. While his father was religiously passive, his mother was more socially aggressive. That is an example of a well-structured and, uh, well, it's right on the money in terms of content as well. Uh, this task, as we may have seen before, looks at grammar and vocabulary as well. Uh, yes. If you're familiar with the E2 language structure, you will know exactly what to do. It's very similar to the retail lecture method, by the way. Um, whoa, what's going on here? Being logged out. Hold on. Okay, cool. I think we're back on. Let's move on. Just before we do, if you're watching this on YouTube Live, don't forget to subscribe to E2 language. So every time we're doing a live stream, you'll receive a notification. You should also like, comment, and share this if you think this is worth sharing. Let's have a look at multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The task is this. After listening to a recording, answer a multiple choice question on the content or tone of the recording by selecting more than one response. So this is similar to multiple choice, multiple answers in reading. Now, time to answer. If you take good notes, which I suggest you do, you should only use about 45 seconds at max to choose your answer or answers. Okay. So let's just discuss scoring briefly again, just like before. If let's suppose a question has four answer options, A, B, C, and D, A and B are the correct ones. If you choose both, you'll get two points. If you select just one, you'll get one point, but you will not lose points for not selecting B. So that's cool. If you select B, same thing, you'll get one point and you won't lose a point for not selecting A. In other words, you can be cautious if you want. If you select A, B and C, well, you'll get two minus one, one point. And if you select all of them, you'll get zero points because of the negative marking. Here we go. You're going to hear a short little lecture. I want you to take notes and listen very carefully. Then I'm going to give you 30 seconds to select the answers, okay? Away you go in three, two, one, start. What do you think would happen if you invited an individual who had been living on the street for many years, had mental health issues, and was an alcoholic to move directly from the street into housing? We'd heard this had been done in New York City and we wondered, and it was called the housing first model, and we wondered if it would work in Utah. So to make that determination, we decided to create a pilot. And Kita was one of the 17 chronically homeless individuals we included in this pilot. She had been on the street for 20 plus years, had mental health, and was a severe alcoholic. The first night in her apartment, she put her belongings on the bed and slept on the floor. The next three nights, she slept out by the dumpster near the apartment building. With the aid of her case manager, she moved back into her apartment, but continued to sleep on the floor for several nights. It took over two weeks for her to develop enough trust and confidence that this apartment was hers and would not be taken away from her before she would start sleeping in the bed. Homelessness is a continuing challenge for many cities throughout our country.
All right. How did you go? I probably should have given you a little bit more time to, sorry, read that question prompt because like all multiple choice questions, the question prompt is key to this. Let's just quickly read it now. It says, which statements are true of the woman named Kita? A, she was 17 years old. B, she was homeless and an alcoholic. C, she had moved from New York to Utah. D, she finally moved back to the streets. E, she eventually learned to sleep on the bed. F, she couldn't afford the rent of the new apartment. The answers are B and E. She was a homeless. She was a homeless should just say she was homeless and an alcoholic. She eventually learned to sleep on the bed. So if you selected B and E, you would get two points or hundred percent. If you chose just one of those, you would still get 50%. So that's a safe option as well. Fill in the blanks. This one's pretty straightforward. A transcript of a recording appears on the screen with gaps. After listening to the recording, type the missing word in each gap. Now, when I took this test, the easiest thing to do is to get your notebook I scribbled down the answers on the notebook. You can, if you want, type directly into the gaps and press the tab key. But I just felt, for me anyway, I just felt safer writing it on the notebook, then quickly typing it into the gaps, checking my work, clicking next and moving on. Okay, so you might want to scribble down the answers onto your notebook. Here we go. I'm only going to give you like 20 seconds to check your work after this. Three, two, one. My subject today is learning. And in that spirit, I want to spring on you all a pop quiz. Ready? When does learning begin? Now, as you ponder that question, maybe you're thinking about the first day of preschool or kindergarten, the first time that kids are in a classroom with a teacher. Or maybe you've called to mind the toddler phase when children are learning how to walk and talk and use a fork. Maybe you've encountered the zero to three movement, which asserts that the most important years for learning are the earliest ones. And so your answer to my question would be, learning begins at birth. Well, today I wanna to present to you an idea that may be surprising, that may even seem implausible, but which is supported by the latest evidence from psychology and biology. And that is that some of the most important learning we ever do happens before we're born. Okie dokie, let's check the answers here. The answers are spirit, ponder, phase, earliest, and implausible. So if you got those five words with the correct spelling, then you will have gotten full marks. Cool, well done. Just be careful with this because even like plural nouns, if it says spirit or spirits, Make sure you put that S on the end or else it will be considered incorrect, okay? So it has to have the, same, uh, the correct grammar. You can check that when you put it in. Good, now we move on to highlight correct summary. This one is also a note-taking task. You will need to listen and take notes. The task is this, after listening to a recording, select the paragraph that best summarizes the recording. Uh, I'll give you about a minute to answer. So as you can see here, it's impossible to listen and read at the same time because the answer options are far too long. So what you need to do is take notes and listen, listen and take notes rather. Then when the audio has finished, you should select the correct answer. Okay, away you go. Start taking notes in three, two, one. My middle child, Oliver, was born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy or MD. MD affects his muscle strength, 
His pulmonary system distorts his body and makes everyday life more challenging than most. From the time he could walk, which was until about two and a half, he had to wear leg braces for stability. Because he wasn't growing appropriately, he had to wear a feeding tube that was placed on his face. He endured stares, and so did I. But my husband Greg and I told him that no matter what, he was just like everybody else. But everyday tasks for Oliver that we all take for granted were incredibly challenging. That simple act of dressing yourself, the very thing that I adore, was a nightmare for him. His form of MD does not affect his mind. His brain is an A plus, which means he's acutely aware of his shortcomings. This became very evident when he started school, and that daily act of dressing yourself was a constant reminder of what he could and could not do. All right, I'll give you one minute to read and select the right answer. Okay, if you heard correctly and took accurate notes, then you would have matched your notes to B. Oliver's muscular dystrophy is only physical, meaning that his mind is normal, which made it particularly difficult for him when he reached school age. Oddly, getting dressed was a function that made Oliver acutely aware of his disease. That is the best summary of that audio. So if you got B, well done. That was by no means easy. Cool. Multiple choice, choose single answer. Guys, we've got about, I reckon, is, what is there, three or four more questions left? Maybe just three. So a few deep breaths, sip of water. Let's, get, let's push on and we'll finish this one, okay? Here we go. Multiple choice, choose single answer. You know exactly what to do. You just have to listen to the audio and select one response, okay? I'm going to give you seven seconds to quickly read the question prompt and the answer options, okay? Three, two, one. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm waking up in a Boston hotel room and can only think of one thing. Tooth pain. One of my ceramic inlays fell off the evening before. Five hours later, I'm sitting in a dentist's chair. But instead of having a repair of my inlay so that I can get rid of my pain, the dentist pitches me on the advantages of a titanium implant surgery. Ever heard of that? <laughs> it essentially means to replace a damaged tooth by an artificial one that is screwed into your jaw. Estimated costs for the implant surgery may add up to 10,000 US dollars. Replacing the ceramic inlay I had before would come at 800 US dollars. Was it my health or the money that could be earned with me that was the biggest concern for my dentist?
Okay, if you listen correctly, this is one of those questions where you can take notes if you want. It's probably more helpful, uh, or you could just listen and then select. It's uh, about the same either way. The answer here was B. So what did the speaker think about his dentist? The speaker thought that the dentist lacked professional integrity, nothing about his unhygienic clinic, not that he was excessively wealthy, not that his solution was ingenious or that his technical knowledge was lacking. B is the only correct answer there. Cool, select missing word. After listening to a recording, select the missing word that completes the recording from a list of options. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear a shorter text, about 30 seconds or so. And you need to listen to the entire thing because the final word or the final phrase of the final sentence is going to be cut off. And you have to anticipate what the speaker was going to say based on what he said. Okay. Let's try this one. Here we go. In three, two, one. Now I know we live in a capitalist society and profits matter a lot. So let's look at it from a financial angle, shall we? The U.S. nonprofit arts industry generates more than $166 billion in economic activity. It employs 5.7 million people and it returns $12.6 billion in tax revenue. But this is only a financial angle, right? We all know that the arts is way more than just an economic value. The arts brings meaning to life. It's the spirit of our culture. It brings people together and it supports creativity and social... Okay, the last word was social. Uh, the answer to this one was cohesion, social cohesion. He talked about how art brings people together and that's what social cohesion means. Nothing about social responsibility, social refuge, social isolation or social entrepreneurship. The answer is E. Cool, highlight incorrect words. This is the second last task. What happens is this. You'll see a transcript of the recording on the screen. While listening to the recording, you need to identify the words in the transcript that differ from what is said. So you just do this as you go. So in other words, you're going to see the transcript and 99% of it will be the same. There will be about four or five words that are different from what the speaker says. What you need to do in the exam, this is a bit of a test of your uh, computer skills. You get the mouse. As soon as you see this task, you put your mouse cursor at the first word and you move the mouse as the lecture goes. And every time you see a word that differs from what he said, you click, right? And you click, 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 and then that's it. And you click next. Of course, you can't click the screen here. So what I want you to do is this, put your finger on the table and I want you to read and listen. And when you see a difference, you tap your finger and just count in your head how many times you tap your finger. We'll look at the answers in a second. Uh, here we go in three, two, one. Attention allows us to notice, select, and direct the brain's computational resources to a subset of all that's available. We can think of attention as the leader of the brain. Wherever attention goes, the rest of the brain follows. In some sense, it's your brain's boss. And over the last 15 years, I've been studying the human brain's attention system. In all of our studies, I've been very interested in one question. If it is indeed the case that our attention is the brain's boss, is it a good boss? Does it actually guide us well? And to dig in on this big question, I wanted to know three things. First, how does attention control our perception? Second, why does it fail us, often leaving us feeling foggy and distracted? And third, can we do anything about this fogginess? Can we train our brain to pay better attention? Okie dokie. Let's look at the words that you should have clicked on, the words that differ from the audio. The words were here. 
should have clicked on strata because in fact the speaker said subset you should have clicked on way because the speaker said sense you should have clicked on convoy because the speaker said guide you should have clicked on disturbed because the speaker said distracted and that last one i think i forgot about uh i think that was different as well but i can't remember because i've screwed that one up so i hope that's okay anyway let's just say that that last one never existed and that leads us on to the final task of the pte well done for sticking around by the way it's a uh, uh taxing experience doing these English language tests, but it's good to do a whole one sitting like this and feeling what it um, is like to be tired and fatigued at the end of it, because you need to still concentrate as much as possible, despite thinking, I want to go home, I want to go to bed, I want to eat some uh, hamburgers, whatever. Right from dictation, the task is this. <laughs> I hope you like my typing there. After listening to a recording of a sentence, type the sentence. You should only spend about 20 seconds typing this sentence, by the way. You should first listen, then type. It's very diffi difficult, if not impossible, to listen and type at the same time. That's just not how the mind works. Listen, absorb the sentence, then type it out. Make sure you have correct punctuation as well. Here we go. Last task of the PT in three, two, one. When we hold our babies for the first time, we might imagine that they're clean slates. Right. How did you go with that sentence? Here we go. The answer is to this sentence here, uh, two possibilities. When we hold our babies for the first time, we might imagine that they're clean slates. Now you can use contraction. See, she certainly used the contraction there. Uh, there's also a comma here, or you could have expanded the contraction. Whoopsie, I didn't mean to do that. You could have expanded the contraction to they are. These are both correct, by the way. Uh, if you didn't get the comma, it doesn't say in the score guide about punctuation, but just to be careful, usually the sentences won't contain commas or any other punctuation apart from capital letters, full stops, possibly an apostrophe, but you may as well just get it all correct anyway. So let's just look at those again. When we hold our babies for the first time, we might imagine that they're clean slates. Cool. Sign up for free, guys. Go to e2language.com if you haven't yet. Make yourself a free account. Think about upgrading because everything you need is in the one platform, including materials, mock tests, methods, as well as tutorials, live classes every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, feedback on your writing, feedback on your speaking, heaps and heaps of skill building stuff. It's all there. And cool. Thanks very much for coming along. I appreciate it. I unfortunately can only stick around for about 10 minutes because uh, I'm going to visit my dad. So, and my brother's gonna drive, which is cool. Uh, thanks very much, cool, good, good, good. I hope you enjoyed that. It's much better when you do it together and uh, it's better when it's live. It's pretty hard to study by yourself. Um, cool, if you have any questions, Pop them into the chat. I'll stick around for a little bit. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so Maya says, twice I've given the PTE and every time I was short on time for write from dictation. My exam ended on three highlight incorrect words. What can I do to manage this time? I took a break at the 10 minutes before listening in both exam. Does that add here? No, so taking the break is separate. The break, break is, don't worry about that. Yes, it's very important that you complete the listening section because right from dictation counts for your uh, writing score as well. 
So it's listening and writing and highlight incorrect words counts for your reading score as well. So you want to get those last two tasks completed or else your other scores are also going to drop. So if you're getting low scores in writing, just make sure you're also completing all of the listening tasks. Um, cool. What else have we got here? Uh, thank you. And say hi to your dad. I will do. Um, I am repeatedly getting 10 in oral fluency and pronunciation. Um, whoa, E2 language graded me as 86 and read aloud. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. 10 is actually zero. So I don't often say this, that could possibly be a technical fault. I'm really not sure there, that's, that's very strange. You can always take the mock test at ptpractice.com, which is $39. And that will give you a very accurate assessment. Just make sure when you do that mock test, you use a good microphone, not just your computer microphone. Um, for the essay we discussed today, shouldn't we write both positive and negative sides and then give the idea or the uh, opinion? Not necessarily. There's three ways to skin this cat. You can just do agree, agree. You can do disagree, disagree, or you can do agree, disagree. Okay, all are fine. Just make sure your opinion, what you think is very clear in the conclusion, okay? As to, in my opinion, I believe this. You can demonstrate both sides but in the conclusion, show your opinion. I scheduled my PT for coming Tuesday. Can you please give me some advice? Here's my advice. Go and sign up for the budget package at e2language.com. All the materials, all the methods, everything right there. Um, uh, Jay. What happens if I just use simple vocabulary in the summary? Will it still score me highly? You should try to be articulate. You should try to use vocabulary that's precise. Okay, so if you have a choice between synonyms like big, for example, you want to use one like large, which sounds a little bit more sophisticated. But in saying that, you don't want to just use big words because they sound good. I've, I, I saw a lot of crazy words in, in, in here and, yeah, don't do that. Just use words that you know. Keep your sentences sim Keep your sentences not necessarily simple, but clear. Clarity is what's key here. Jay, do we get marked down for writing more than 300 words in the essay? Yes, you do. Right between 200 and 300. I have written the PT exam twice. I only got 65. Um, okay, that's just practice, I think. Jay, for writing section, do we separate time for each task or is it accumulated time for the whole section? Good question. In writing, the timing is uh, individual. So you get 10 minutes per summarized written text. If you finish in eight minutes, the time does not carry over. Okay, just 10 minutes. Then for the essay, 20 minutes. So use all of the time in writing. Same with listening, summarized spoken text, by the way. You get 10, about 10 minutes use it all because it's only after summarized spoken text that you need to manage your own time. Yes, Raghuram, I will. Thank you for that. Jay, there is a straight question in essay section, which it seems to have appeared in the PT test, which goes like, how does design of buildings impact humans, blah, blah, blah. Um, how to tack tackle such question. The essay structure will still be applicable for that, but obviously you need to answer the question, not necessarily give your opinion. It, it still is an opinion question, uh, but yeah, just just you have to be flexible on test day. Um, the essay structure should still work for that one. Mm. Will the PT test from Pearson at ptpractice.com give a fair evaluation of where I stand. Yes, it will. If anything, it's a little bit stricter than the real exam. That's what our experience has been. Um, that's good though. Guys, I'm gonna have to head off. Um, I apologize for not being able to stick around, but anyway, good practice. Thanks very much for coming. Don't forget to sign up at e2language.com. Feel free to donate to paypal.me slash e2language. Uh, you can feed the team. Anyway, it's a pleasure to teach you. Good luck in your exams. And if you see me on the street, do say hi. I like that. That's cool. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys soon.